you need to spare more minutes. I do. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll give you a copy of a letter that Steve sent out from St. John Police Department just for your information. Uh, it's under it's There you go. It's under this. Okay. Uh, I need to know, are you guys going to KAC? In Wichita? Yes. Um, we need to, well, we need to do this. October 29th. We got you in the oh, minutes. Oh, here he is. I call it. And your clock is fast. 8.32. <laughs> your clock is fast, <laughs> in case you wanted to know. I think you're right. Because the bank clock even said 8.28. Okay. Yeah. Um, we need to pick our voting delegate, KC. Okay. okay. Uh, um, but we have a... We, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you need to get your motel room. Obviously, the Hyatt is already sold out. Sure. It's where I head. It's out of Vander's Day. Yeah, yeah, all the. So. You don't reserve yeah. rooms from year to year. Huh? I don't know. It's at the Hyatt. October 29. I doubt if I go because that's right where we're doing tax day comes I'm going to go for the one day meeting, but I'm going to go for the whole thing. <laughs> Thanksgiving weekend or something last year. But this is earlier than usual. It's not a good time for folks. Might not be a good time for farming this year. Oh. Oh. Uh, whoever decides to go will be your voting delegate. Oh, that's um, true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's true to leave. Where am I going to do that? And I talked to Amber, the auditor, and we can take the video conferencing expenses out of county general. Okay. And Clay will be gone next week. You missed that. So, Kurt, are you, you going to go? Pardon? Is that fully? No, I ain't going to go to that. So it's just you. So we just don't have to take Unless one of you other two are going to go. <laughs> I get to be sick that day. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you come back with the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> the doctors know. Wow. And then you have the big con continent um, restoration. restoration proposal for fixing the chimney. And you've now caught you up. Almost Thank two you. minutes. Thank you very much. <coughs> I move we approve the minutes. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt or approve the minutes of last meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. What do they want to do with the restoration? What the uh, the chimney breaks. They'll fix it. Uh, 
in, in my vault, the, the wall is peeling. Is there, can we get that fixed or would you guys take Did a look, look at, at that? it? He doesn't look new inside. Uh, the outside would that be? Well, probably a window no, or something. It's inside my wall. Oh. The walls are crumbling. Crumbling. There's, There's a lot of time. Time. Yeah. It's been that way a long time, but it really needs to be fixed. Well, it's the same way with the, the courtroom up on third floor. There on the east side. Yeah. This, it's been going on and I I really think it's due to this chimney. And I have been up there to look, but I think that chimney cap is the reason it's creating that that rusting. Did you mention anything about the chimney cap? Yeah, are we replacing that and yeah. getting out of that rusting? <laughs> yeah. Okay. He he pretty well spells it out there. Well he wants to pressure wash it basically. And then chemicals. some kind of chemicals to get the stain off and then can you wash the outside of the courthouse windows ways? <laughs> we need to find some way to wash the windows, I guess. They need washed. The insides need washed too. That's easy. <laughs> To get the storm window, you about have to take the window out from outside because you can't raise our windows up uh, yet high, enough. high enough. You know, I have one window that will only go up that far, so you can't wash it. So, so if you want to wash the storm windows inside and out, you're going to have to do it from the outside. $7,000 to do that. It's kind of a rough one. Torsion. It's very cool. Hey, you can set that scaffold if you do it. Yeah. That's a long ways off the ground. Yeah. No, I forget what the price was on the front. Because we started in the back and then do the south and then uh, west and the north. It's like four or five year rotation. Your walls are plastered in there, I think. I think so. Who did the, somebody, the kitchen upstairs on the fourth floor was doing that, they had that redone. Who did that? Mike Saylor, I think, did that. Mm. you got to have the water to, to cause that. Something's got to be causing it. went somewhere else, but I can't remember where I saw it. Chimney, but they will clean the outside windows. At least the ones that are close right there. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can't spray that chemical on it. Get that chemical on you, you know.
And, and then I found out that Edwards County was getting 12,000, and, and we got five something. Oh, wow. And I thought, well, oh, wait a minute, that isn't quite fair. So I just thought, well, if, if that's all it is, it, and nobody really examines it, I said, that we, we probably put in more time than that. So I put down more time. Well, then anybody checks, anybody. And I, I still think I'm, I'm pretty reasonable in the number of hours that I'm putting down. So uh, I'm not sure why Edwards County. That's when I asked for all the numbers. I wanted to know what every county got. And I, I got the numbers, and, and there is no great rhyme or reason to it, because some looks like they're population-wise, they should get more, and some look like they should get less. But I, I, don't, I don't know. It's a mystery to me. They just don't buy it. It's all based on paperwork. Yeah. It's based on paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. And population, and there's a lot of different things. Yeah. I, I finally decided that. I guess I you would think that they probably just based on all population would be a whole lot more equal and fair. Well, my, my thought is even a little bit deeper than that, though. I really think that they should, they should support emergency management. If they want an emergency manager in each county in, in the state, I think they should support them up to a, le a reasonable level of, of expectations that you could hire somebody for that. And then distribute more funds after that, which, which would give more funds to... And, and, and even if they had to tell the smaller counties that you had to neighbor with your neighbors, and that you, you had to have an emergency manager for the two counties, but I think that they should pay for that in close to completeness before they just give $90,000 to, to Lawrence, Douglas County. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but most, most of us think no. concerns the federal bureau. I'm not motion we a lot of play to sign that. Second. What's the name of Second. Emergency. 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 There's a backup that they can get it in for, they can't even give us a, a day to get it in. So Southwest Truck, Nick got hold of them, and they are going to pick it up this afternoon. I told them all I wanted the diagnosis, and then I'll come back and let you know the good news better. Um, you probably got a document from the state rel uh, relative to our uh, inspection. Our inspection. They're, they're very nitpicky, and I, I think they just like to yeah. write something down every year. So I don't know what they put in. It's probably the same one that I got, but they found a spotlight. We'd actually had uh, uh, an electrical outlet put in one of our ambulances, and when we did, uh, the mechanic that did that disconnected our spotlight, and unbeknownst to us, and our inspector found it. So uh, he found that. That was the only thing on the ambulances that he could find. Uh, and then he had some, uh, actually some findings relative to just our, our paperwork again. They're, they're great on, state's great on paperwork. So, How often do they inspect? Every year. Every year. Yeah. Every year. So he had some, uh, we didn't have all of our evaluations after our class. And, uh, we do them anonymously, and so um, the folks just are in hurry to get out of class after the end of the class. And, so I'm going to put their names on it. They're not going to be anonymous from here on out. And that way, at least I can go back and say, hey, you didn't fill out your evaluation. The state's going to kick us on that if you don't do that. So that's that's what that document is. Yeah. What does Fritz get a copy for? He's the medical director. So it would be uh, interesting to him to make sure that he would know how we're doing relative to having spotlights that operate. <laughs> I think we're, we're oh, yeah, I made it really reason. <laughs> September is, is uh, like National Preparedness Month. But we're going to kick off just a little bit early since school starts and put something out. And then once September hits, then we'll put something out periodically. Just kind of an educational thing for the public. Uh, please, that is all. And I gave him the letter. Oh, yeah, I passed that one. Just to get John uh, uh, on this. That's all I got. All right, thank you. Steve, I need to
Hey, Lisa. And then the permit renewal for our uh, C and D has been approved. Just another fee. <laughs> Medicare pays 101% of what they consider to be allowable costs, which doesn't include all of the costs that you incur. Uh, Medicaid, for the last five years, has been paying at 100% cost, so again, not paying complete and total cost. So really what you have there is it's three quarters of your business you have no opportunity to make any margin on. You've got some private pay business that typically in the hospital setting you lose money on as well, uh, leaving a very small portion of your business being personal insurance with Ross, uh, those types of things where you have an opportunity to really make any margin at all. And so that, that's one of the, the really probably the key challenge that we face up there. Uh, with that said, the way that the payment methodology works, you file a, a cost report, uh, which is very similar to a, a tax return filed at IRS that determines what is the actual cost that the hospital incurred for the year, looks at here's the total pot cost, here's the total patient volume that came through to determine how much is Medicare going to pay you per unit of service. And the little short page that I handed to you on, on the second page, the bottom three numbers, the items 21, 22, and 23, these were really the, the ones that I wanted to show you. Item number 21 is looking at acute inpatient days. You can see in 2010, the hospital had 450 roughly inpatient stays. Days in, in the hospital in 2011 it dropped over 250, and in 2012 it was around 114. Skilled swing bed is a, kind of an intermediate step when somebody is well enough that they don't need to be really in the hospital bed, they're really doing more rehab before they go home. Uh, that's what that level of service is. That has also dropped down. And so what, what winds up happening is as the utilization goes down, the cost per unit goes up. 
in the hospital world, you're highly regulated in terms of staffing. You, you've reached a point where you, you really kind of at minimal staffing level that you have to maintain uh, to keep the ER open and do other things that, that you're required to do for the regulations. So, uh, you know, that, that was the point that I wanted to, to bring to you all so that you can understand uh, as we look at, you know, really flip back to the, uh, to the audit reports and the uh, page four is really looking at the income statement of the hospital. And, and what you can see there is when you look at the uh, total operating expenses, the hospital has done a phenomenal job of, the, of bringing those expenses down. Uh, again, the problem being that utilization has come down enough as well that the challenge is really getting the, uh, the payments in from those government programs. What you do see on here, the uh, that intergovernmental revenue line down in non-operating revenues, uh, ordered 75,000. That's the property tax support uh, that comes from the county to the hospital. Uh, we do also show the no fund warrants that we received in 2012. And with those items, you know, really what we're looking at, uh, the increase in that position during 2012, about $463,000. So without the no fund warrants, it would have been a little bit negative, uh, but certainly far better than what we had in 2012. <coughs> Really what we're looking at, things are things are improving. Uh, they're, they're getting a little better. But again, the challenge will be that payments continue to get slashed for the Medicare and Medicaid. So we're 75 percent of the population that goes to the hospital is on those. That's that's really the big quandary that we're in. Yeah. Uh, no, Bob, what else did you want me to touch on that, that I did not share? Are there any questions that you have? What you're looking at is so you're you're aware of what what you're looking at on this page. The uh, the three years are all Stafford County Hospital. Uh, the far right column, uh, the Kansas Kansas Critical Access, averages that includes probably about 40 hospitals uh, in the same kind of system that you're in. So small rules that are getting cost reimbursement for Medicare. It's really kind of give you an idea of. The, of where you stack up. This is a report that we put together and with the board uh, as we do the audit report. Your line on 21 on there. Yes. What, what caused that drastic change? I mean, that's, that's a huge, huge change in numbers. It is a huge change that there's a couple of different things at play, and one is a really a total cultural and environmental change. Uh, we're seeing this same trend line everywhere. It's not just a Kansas thing, even it's a national trend. The inpatient stays have been going down for probably five to ten years. Some of that people believe is partly based on the economy. Some of it's just on changing medical practice. More things are done on an outpatient basis. And, uh, specifically to you, your, your trend line is probably a little bit sharper than, than some and that, that's partly been uh, the difficulty in, in keeping the position on staff. Uh, when you're, Covering emergency room, because a lot of times that's where the inpatient admits come from, is the ER. And when you're covering and don't actually own that position, a lot of times if there is an admit, they'll put them in a different facility because they then have to round at that hospital. Mm -hmm. and we're on line five, where you have total margin. Yes. 12.39. The total margin, what? Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, well, the total margin, the, the 12.39, that does include uh, the, the, the no fund one. It does. Yeah. The, when you look at number four, the operating margin, that, that's looking at the $600,000 operating loss compared to your $3.2 million of operating revenue. The total margin includes the complete, the total increase in that position of 463000 so, it includes both the no fund warrants and the property tax. Yeah, that was the case. Yeah. 
Or do you, I mean, project, do you have an idea of where that number will fall, like, say, this year, without the number one? Um, this year, I mean, will I that number not. be closer to six, do you think? Or do you think it'll stay in double digits? Oh, it, it, it will not stay in, in double digits. In double digits. No. I didn't know if it would cut itself in half or, or not quite. Yeah, if, if you looked at uh, 2012, yeah, it'd be about zero or just slightly negative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah, we do look at, uh, you know, we, we have looked at some of the May and, and June of 2013 financial data, but not, not honored right. it to where yeah. I could yeah. comfortably yeah. say it would be this or that. But. That is the uh, that's the real challenge in the cost reimbursement setting is you do a good job of cutting costs. The better job you do of cutting costs, the less money you get paid for Medicare. So it's kind of a, a real quirk of that system. The plus being that the further you can cut costs, even though you're getting paid less on Medicare, the more opportunity you have to potentially make a margin on your other business. And then the Really, when I look at this, uh, I told Todd when, when we were out uh, exiting from the audit that I was scared to death that it was going to be a large payable back to Medicare because there was nearly a million dollar reduction in expense where we paid on a cost basis. They might work some of that back. <laughs> back. <laughs> uh, but the, the good news or bad news, depending on how you look at it, was that the patient volume had dropped more than, a little bit more than the expense had dropped. Was, uh, you did I actually wind up getting a little bit more money back from that here. So. When you take the way things are going, it's going to be less than the as you have it beds than, than it is now. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be more outpatient. Yeah. Telemedicine, that kind of stuff. And right. It's going to continue working for it. Yeah. Kind of because so. the, the other thing to be aware of when, when we look at the, uh, the federal dollars, sequestrations in play, Medicare is getting cut by 2%. Uh, so your 101% cost reimbursement becomes 99% cost reimbursement. And when you back out the things that Medicare considers to be not viable that they won't pay for, and they include certain things like some advertising and various other things of that nature, really what you're probably looking at is more in the 80 to 85% of the true cost is what they will pay for. It is one that, uh, that this is something that as we look at these negative operating margins, uh, there's 83 critical access hospitals in the state of Kansas. There's maybe half a dozen that don't have a negative operating margin. So it is one that's it's very heavily mm -hmm. a subsidized area and uh, something that's supported by the communities that, that have these hospitals. So this audit was a little better than previous audits? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no issues that, that we had to involve any, any legal counsel or anything of that nature. So, no, uh, no questioning of integrity or you know, those types of problems. There's a couple of areas where we have to be careful as far at least with the limited amount of personnel in the business office. We can better we can have some of those responsibilities spread out, but we just don't have that much manpower up there when we can. So uh, you guys have some suggestions for Mackenzie and, and her folks that are they're always working with us trying to make sure there's other what's the word I want to use kind of Little oversight, yeah, yeah, checks and balances because yeah. 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 that, that's definitely, I mean, that's something we see in all hospitals. Like this, is, the staff is, is fairly limited that controls the, the cash and the money. And so you, you wind up with people doing things ideally, you wouldn't have to do this kind of things with that stuff that you've done. Ultimately, what we, 
always do is try to look at that and make recommendations of what this person is going to do both of these things. We would like to see someone outside of that process reconciling or, or doing some things and signing off and leaving. So that is something that's a key part of what our audit does entail and make those recommendations each year based on turnover and you know, what's actually going on in the building. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be here with financials also. <laughs> I have a little bit of I'm just anxious for her to come back. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's real stressful without her, I have to say. Anything else you guys could think of? Yeah, okay. Okay. We'll get out of your hair. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Did you get a copy? Did you get a copy? No, the auditors want a copy. Do you want a copy of my copy? Do you want a copy of this? Yeah, I'll put my book downstairs. Well, here, you can have so this. So what do we need to do about this? I'll scan it. Okay, thank you. I think we should. We've always asked other companies to participate in a bid. We've got no response. And, you know, in, in the past, they've done a good job. So I, I think it's well worth the money. And I think you know, some of our problems are coming from the chimney. Well, there's not all companies that do this kind of work. It's a part of it. But locally, they've been here. Well, I know there's the library over at Stafford, and the uh, Historical Society uses them. And it's tough. It's tough to find somebody that does yeah. this this type of work anymore. You know, it used to be you could look in the yellow pages and find several bricklayers, and that's not happening. So we probably need a motion to I move mean, that they proceed with the pump panel on their bid for uh, cleaning up the chimney and repairing it as needed. Say that. It's been moved and seconded to accept the contract with mid pump panel for $7,156. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. There's two copies. Joe, do you have anything? Lisa, do you have anything? Well, since Joe's here, I wonder um, about the tax sale, Joe. Are you. Um, the upcoming one? Huh? The upcoming one? Yeah. The, there's a couple parcels that have the specials on it. You said you would take a look at it. I noticed they weren't. Does that qualify for net, uh, to be in the upcoming tax sale since the specials were never paid? From the last tax sale? I'm, I'm not sure I understand the Okay, question. like the city of Stafford did not forgive the specials at the tax sale. Well, the city, and you the announced that they. The city ate the specials. The city, not Stafford. Stafford, 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 Stafford didn't. St. John Maxwell. Well, Stafford bought, city of Stafford bought five or six. Yeah, yeah these are parcels that Stafford didn't okay. buy. Okay. So there's two parcels. This is, you're talking about the last tax sale. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. But, but they're not on the list for the upcoming sale, but yet they have delinquent specials. So does that qualify them for the upcoming sale? No, no they, 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 basically those specials are uncollectible by the city because the city had its golden opportunity to acquire the property, and they didn't. So then do we need to abate those off? Yeah, well, the city has to. I mean. well, well, how can I do it if nobody... Okay, the, okay, the city's being the ostrich and keeping its head in the ground, I let me talk to our auditor what okay. they want. I mean, okay. I, I, or I, I can call them if you want, I just don't know what to do. So and that's why I was asking. I'll, I'll certainly, certainly talk to the auditor to see what they want for you to enter. I don't pretend to be an accountant. <laughs> okay. So you're thinking maybe since Stafford didn't purchased they're kind of out of it now. Well, well Stafford bought five or six mm -hmm. of them. Yeah, these are properties. two parcels that have But they, they, they didn't touch two parcels. And in fact, one of those parcels in Stafford, that Wild River Properties house, which at least yeah. from the outside appeared to be intact, the people who bought it never filed a deed. We have several that have yeah, filed a deed. That's another problem. So I'm going to send a letter to those people and tell them to get their deeds filed? I'm, I'm, I'm we, certainly, on, on that matter, I'm going to talk to uh, our Register of Deeds and, and suggest to her if she let me file an affidavit saying, hey, on such and such a date, these people bought the property and we gave them a deed, you know, so there's no you know, mystery. Yeah, tax statements will go to the old person unless we have a deed. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, but I'll send a letter to these people because some of them are at Maxwell. Well, he, 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 here, here's the deal. A lot of these people are getting advice from these DVDs they buy for 1994. <laughs> <laughs> who bought those two parcels that had the... Well, one of them was the Wild River property. Yeah, that, that was our interpreter. Yeah, well, that, who, who comes to court is our interpreter of it. Of course, we haven't had her in the last couple of weeks. I was going to jump her and say, hey, why don't you the other one your was deed? The We're talking a big $8. They should be responsible for the special. So. Yes, and it was announced at the day of sale. Yeah, no, they ought to, be, they ought to have to pay them. Right. But um, they were to come to the treasurer's office and pay them, and then... And then yeah. I've had the city of Stafford inquire, well, how come that hasn't been collected? I said, well, they haven't paid them. They said, well, did you send them notice? I said, it was announced at the day of sale. I, I can't go, you know. I would think maybe you could resell it again after a period of time. You know, they don't pay their permits. Well, you know, basically after these, uh, we get no tax revenues on these properties for two years, they will be subject to the yeah. tax. We'll close pay it again. Or sell it again. You know, you, you fail to record a deed at your own risk. <laughs> That doesn't help us out. Yeah. Trying to do it. No, next time let's just so. file them and pay for it out of county or, or collect the filing fee from the people that day. Yeah. Because a lot of these, if they don't get recorded, they no, don't I'm, get I'm never, I've never, I've never seen this problem before. And again, I tend to suspect there's some in, infomercials. DVD or something that's <laughs> suggesting this. Oh, you can avoid future taxes by not filing your deed. Well, which is, you know, clearly erroneous advice. They could also lose their property. Yeah. But, you know, you get what you pay for. So, what uh, recess? Does you use a uh, permit, and this is for a single wind turbine to fire Staff County Fire And the Zoning Commission. They had that meeting on July 15th at 8 p.m. And, and what that what you have in front of you would be then your resolution. The only two stipulations they put in is they wanted a setback ratio of a 1.1, which it, it will be a it's setback 375 feet. So that's further than what it's actually like a 1.4 ratio. Because those don't they don't you know they, but those don't come down like a power does. They actually will. Uh, uh, cell tower collapses and the setbacks are not quite as important as the and plus uh, there was one question that the zone can change by the ice on those leanings if it's not factual enough it's going to splatter it out on the road so 
the setback on this was a lot more important on that. And then they left the fencing optional to them, uh, mostly in case they want to, you know, in case of vandalism or something of that nature. But, so they're going to play that by ear. Okay. This is kind of, uh, I can see why photos aren't used in, in a lot of things because this is what it eventually will look like. That tower is not there yet. But that's that's what it will look like uh, when it's built. And there's a. Sorry, that's a long way away from there. How far is it? Um, let me get the. That's south of the block. Uh huh. That's right. I thought it was going to be right out there east. And they actually got with um, they they got with Phil already about the you know going under the county road then and so forth. They got with them. The commission also asked about. Um, if they if they got with the uh, federal aviation and they did for the hike and so forth and we put that in the zoning action over there and then they actually went one step further they was actually already got with the wildlife and parks because of Corvair up there and that's been approved by them. and so we just had a copy of that we put that in and put that in the file also to show that it's it wasn't in the flyaway not in the flyaway so they know where every duck flies they told me <laughs> they do yeah. I had them call me and they said, where exactly on your property is that? I said, well, I can send you a map or a picture, that would be fine. I said, well, what difference does it make? And he said, I have an overlay that tells me where every duck and goose flies. And I said, you need a real job. <laughs> he didn't like that. Here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the, you see up here, we've got some flower in up uh, here would be like the cemetery right here, and so they were south here, and they got with feel about coming on this here road for the utilities that were on the Yeah, I thought they were cool about here. Mm -hmm. Probably not far enough away. Probably not, and then the initial that I heard was over here, which, you know, they do, they do make a little bit of a humming sound, and so, which was nice about not being here, is, you know, if there's a funeral or something, then you would be expected from that humming and so forth. So, I think, I thought that was far enough off the road not to get ice on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. and what about this road? That same way. Same way. Yep. Yep. Well, that's measured right now. That's up to one point. Is that one of the ratio of that? Yeah. Is From the peak of the of the of the, the tallest blade, if it would fall over, it still you still have a point three ratio of that. Uh, Two hundred eighty five feet. So it's not as big as the. The wind farm, those are over 400 feet, but it's not as small as the first one either. How many kilowatts is that? Yeah. Um, they said, I don't, I don't remember what time they said. Do you remember? 15 okay. minutes. Okay. okay. Yeah. I think that's business. It was very interesting, that meeting. That guy from BTI was very interesting. So I think we have everything in the zone folder now. So I guess on So is there a recommendation to to approve it with with, with that setback? To, yeah, to and then with the fencing optional. And then that does come to you guys and then that's a copy there, but then here's the original yeah. that, that you all have the number of their team. They signed the twenty five year lease with Mr. Resolution number 13. Make motion we adopt resolution 2013 13. Second. It's been moved and seconded. We adopt resolution 2013 13. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Two better fitting than 1013. Did you have 13? Thirteen. Nine, thirteen. Thirteen. Twenty, thirteen. Yeah. Eleven, twelve, fourteen. The wind's having to push the board out of my. Oh, really? Yeah. 
first time it's had a breakdown in six foot from here. Quarantine? Oh, yeah. Maybe you can put a new controller up, not just replace the base. Okay. All right. And the big box. That's all I have. You guys have anything? He said he was going to text this anyway. Thanks a lot, Ben. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. I'd like to call for executive session for non elected personnel five minutes. Okay. Lisa, do you need me? Or? <coughs> You're welcome to stay. Well, or not on the run upstairs and dump some of the No, paper. we don't need to. But okay. you're welcome to. Well, Kurt, trust me, I can always find things to do in this building. <laughs> and then we go into the second session for 10 minutes for discussion on the election. So you got it. Yeah, it's been moved to second. We're going to the second session for 10 minutes. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no one in. Motion carried. Okay, floor adjourned.